What's going on? This is Ryan with Automatic Comics. And if you are not aware, there has been some pretty big news going on or a story going on in comics, in graded comics. There was a 9.9 .9 giant size X-Men one that recently popped up on Comic Connect. And we're going to talk about that book a little bit more. Specifically, we're going to go check out those high res scans of this book that are on CGC's site. Let's check this thing out. Is it really? A 9.9? .9? Take a closer look. All right, so before we get started, please remember to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button if you'd like to see more content like this. So I put out a video about a day ago or so where went over this new 9.9 .9 that came out with Giant Says X-Men 1. This is the first 9.9 .9 in Giant Size X-Men 1 out of over 12,000 copies graded. Brings a lot of questions out, you know, where it's like, we've been hearing a lot more about 9.9s and 10s lately, and all of a sudden in this huge book, a 9.9 pops up. It's just, the timing is strange. <laughs> it, it just, it's like, it's a bad optics. It doesn't look good. Uh, but regardless of that, uh, you can go check out that video. If you want to go check out that video, my thoughts on that. What we're going to do in this one, is we're going to go take a look at those high-res scans that are on CGC's page. And we're going to take a close look at this book and see if this thing really, you know, does it really look like a 9.9? Because that's always, that's always the question, right? The other thing that I thought we'd do is that this book, I believe, is number six in part of a larger submission. You can tell by the serial number on the book. And so we're going to take a look at some of the other books that are part of the submission, see what else gets submitted alongside a 9.9 .9 giant size X-Men 1 and see what other types of books are in there, if there's anything interesting. But let's go check this thing out. If you aren't aware, this was on Instagram. This is kind of the post that got everybody's attention. This is Vincent Serzolo from Comic Connect, and he made this Instagram story or put out this Instagram story uh, where he was showing this giant size X-Men 9.9 and it's, you know, the first ever one of one and a 9.9 .9 for Giants as X-Men number one. And so that got everybody talking. If you go over to Comic Connect, it's already there. So this is their next big auction that's coming up in June. Originally, it was this Detective Comics 38, the first Robin, that was the kind of like the premier book that was on here for this auction. Now it's this 9.9 .9 giant size X-Men one. If we go over and, you know, take a closer look at this one. The, the, you see, they've already put that QES sticker on. It's like, looks good for a 9.9. .9. I, I don't know. I, I, me, I ignore those stickers. Those stickers don't mean anything to me. But this scan here really doesn't give us all that much information. It's actually like when you try to zoom in on it, it's still not super clear. You know, it's like it's bigger. You know, you can see some things. But the CGC scan is really good. So we're going to jump over to that CGC scan. Now you can see here, we have a clear shot of the ser of the, the serial number for the book, 4388239006. So we can go over to CGC and they have this, you know, the resource up here, verify CGC certification number. Then you plug that number in and you can see this book. Now, what I mentioned where th there are other books in the submission is that with the serial numbers, the way they work is that this last little like three digits at the end here, this counts up from one to usually I think it's like 25, however many books were in that submission. And so this one has goes up to six. So it means there are likely at least five other books. I think it actually goes up to eight. I've, you know, I've looked at them. And so it goes up to eight, it was seven or eight. And so there are other books that are part of the submission. It'd be interesting to look at some of those. First things first, you know, the thing I think we are most interested in is checking out, you know, this, the details on this book. And we can see there are no greater notes. Now, Talked about that. You know, it seems like if you are not a Tenno, if a book is not a Tenno, I think we all agree, except obviously, except CGC, we all agree there should be graders' notes to say, why isn't this book a Tenno? Why isn't this book perfect? What makes this copy a 9.9 .9 versus a 10 versus a 9.8? That kind of thing. Right here, these scans, they don't look they don't look like they're all that high resolution, but you can expand the book. You can you can select the book and you can zoom in a lot. And so we can take a very close look at this 9.9 .9 and see, you know, are there any things on here that really jump out? 
Now I'll say like right off the bat, a lot of times people will call out things like this. This is usually a reflection on the inner well, this little thing here. So that is probably not like some loose piece of paper or anything like that. And so first thing we can say like, I mean, the, the bindery cut looks really good. That's usually one of the big differentiators with a 9.9 .9 versus a 9.8. It's this cut up in the corner here. And this one does look really good. This looks like this is just part of, you know, the manufacturing cut. I don't think that this is anything there. Same thing with like these little imperfections along the cut. Because we've got to remember, we are we are very zoomed in on this book. Uh, then we get to this edge. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of that corner there. I mean, I'll say that right now. Like that is not like a, that's not a razor sharp corner. I, I mean, we're, we can take a look at maybe another Giant Says X-Men 1 and see if, you know, it's similar or not. That's not a razor sharp corner. Is that manufacturing? I don't know, but I'm, I don't really feel super 990 to me. But, you know, we keep going down the edge because one thing I've talked about with Giant Size X-Men 1 before, the CGC cases seem to do a number on this right edge here. And so you need to be cautious with this book and see if there's any indentations that have occurred from the book shifting around in the case and, and damaging it. And I, I don't see anything on this one. These are... Again, this is kind of like that manufacturing, just the, the cut, the imperfections from the cut. This corner looks fine. Like, this is what a sharp corner looks like. So, to me, you know, like that one, it's it's pretty different from what's going on up here. I mean, I'll say, like, it's pretty different from what's going on up there. I mean, like, with a 9.9, nine, if this is the first 9.9 nine, out of 12,000, like, 250 or whatever copies that have been graded of this book, I want this thing to be perfect. <laughs> you know, otherwise... And I realize it's not a 10, so it's not like technically perfect, but it should be pretty darn close to perfect. And go along the bottom edge. Bottom edge looks fine. Get down to, to this corner here. This corner looks, I mean, it looks fine. It looks normal. Now, oh man. I saw this, and this immediately made me go, is, is this a 9-9? Nine nine? Like, is this acceptable in a 9-9? Nine nine? Because if you're not aware, with Giant Says X-Men 1 being a square bound book, it is stapled on the interior, and then the cover is glued on at the spine. And so a lot of times what happens on this book is because where those staples are, you get the staples pushing against the cover. And here, they've pushed against the cover, and you have color loss. I mean, is that acceptable in a 9-9? I mean, this is the type of thing that I would, like, I would like to have that answered. Because to me, I don't, I don't see how that's acceptable in a 9.9. I mean, I, I can see that in a 9.8. I mean, I've had 9.8s where you get color rub on the book at Staples, and you can still get a 9.8 with that. But should you be able to get a 9.9 .9 with that? That's what I want to know. Because... Like, yeah, uh, like that corner, the upper right corner. Maybe I can let that slide a little bit. I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> that. That looks like color loss at where those staples are on the interior, where you've now had rubbing of this book against something else, and you have that's. I mean, it's damaged. Like to me, it doesn't seem like a nine nine to me. But hey, you know, let's let's keep going up. We'll see if we see anything else. The other staple, I couldn't really see. I don't know if it's maybe right or somewhere in here. It might be where the white is, so it doesn't really jump out. So you can't really tell if there's any damage at that staple. But nothing else really jumped out on this book. The big things to me, at least on the front cover, big things were this corner up here. It just didn't look perfect, but that could be just a cut thing. Like that, it may just be a cut from the printer. But this definitely isn't a cut from the printer. <laughs> like this is color loss at that staple on the inside unless unless it's something on the case or something like that this is color loss at that staple and on the the one on comic connect like you can kind of see it but you can't really it's you're it's not high enough res you know it's not a high enough res image but you can you can definitely clearly see something going on at where that staple is so you know that's that's on the front cover Let, let's take a look at the back cover see if just anything jumps out so we're going along the back. I mean, this like this is a sharp corner. Like that that corner looks great. You know, go along the top. Top looks fine. This you know bindery cut looks fine. 
back cover, like you can see, so this is where that staple probably is right here. You can kind of see the indentation a little bit on the back and then we keep going down. And then the other one, maybe kind of right here. It's hard to, it really is hard to tell if it's cleaned well. And then this corner looks good Go along the bottom edge here. This is one of those little things I'm talking about where this might be folded in a little bit. I'm not sure. You know, but this is the type of thing where you do get the, the edge of the book push that sometimes it shifts and it like pushes against this plastic. And that could be like a little fold there. I don't know for sure. This is, again, very zoomed in. But we're talking about a 9.9, right? You know, I think we want this thing to be basically perfect. And then we're going up the, the edge here. Nothing else jumps out. So on the back cover, the only thing that really jumps out on the back cover is this tiny little possible fold. It could be a cut. It's impossible to tell from this angle. That front cover. Yeah. That one. I don't like that. <laughs> oh, that's me. I don't like it. Uh, but, okay, so that's the giant size X-Men one. Let's see what else is in this submission. So what you can do here is you copy the cert number and you just change the six to a one. So first book in here, there's a... Amazing Spider-Man 129, 9.6. I mean, nice book, but it's it's not a 9.8 or 9.9. That's one of the things I was kind of wondering, like, is there some other like 9.8 or 9.9 uh, unknown book, you know, that's never been graded in that grade before hidden in here. But, you know, it's just a, a 9.6 off white to white, Amazing Spider-Man 129. It's a nice book, but it's not, it's not you know, getting all kinds of attention like the Giant Six X-Men 1. Let's look at book number two. Got a Marvel Mystery Comics 21. Got a Golden Age book in here. Pretty cool. Like World War II, Nazi cover. 6-0. Really nice grade for this book. So cool book. Let's check out number three. Got a Journey into Mystery 86, 9.6. That's a nice book. Five and 9.6, only three higher. Let's check out that uh, check out that census on this one. Got five and nine, six, only three higher. I have to think these probably aren't on the census yet since we know the giant size X-Men one isn't on this census yet. So I'm thinking these probably aren't there either. But again, you know, nothing, I like guess not the top of census or anything like that. Let's see what else is in here. Let's check out number four. Got an X-Men 94. Now this is one uh, Drew over at Como Comics. He was mentioning like, this is one that would be really interesting if we saw a 9-9 pop-up of this book, because this is a much tougher 9-8 than Giant Says X-Men 1, than Amazing Spider-Man 129, than Hulk 181. You can see here only 41 9-8s. And so this is a new 9-8 for this, for this book. Off-white to white pages. This is a very expensive book in a 9-8. But again, would be interesting if one of these happens to be a 9-9. But this is a very, very tough 9-8 uh, even. So... It would be interesting to see that one. But even this at a 9.8, very light spine stress lines, breaks color. I don't know if we can make these out on here. Yeah, I mean, you can see them right there, there. I'm guessing these are scratches on the case, which, God, why are you putting, like, this is like a, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand $50,000 book, maybe 30000 now. It's dropped a lot. Put in a case that doesn't have scratches on it. <laughs> Come on, guys. This is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, everything else generally looks good. I mean, but it does have, it's got, you know, it's like one spine tick here. Looks like maybe one here, one here. I don't know if that's a spine tick or not. So, I mean, it's probably got, I mean, and you can't really see anything in the white. So there could be something there. It feels like about three spine ticks. This is like, it's one of those books that's between a 9.6 and a 9.8. That's what that one feels like. Between a 9.6 and a 9.8. Let's check out book number five. So which one is number five? Captain Adam 83, 9.8, 1 in 9.8, higher. Now, this is how I'm almost certain that this is not on the census yet, because I know there is a 9.8 of this book. It sold last year, it sold in like November, for like 7,800 or 7,200 or, or something like that. Uh, if you're not familiar with this one, this is the uh, first appearance of Ted Cord as Blue Beetle. But, uh, but yeah, 9.8, I mean, this, this one's actually pretty cool. You know, like for, for what it is, 
when you look at the, the census for this book, seven, nine, sixes, only one other nine, eight. And so now there's going to be two nine, eights out there. Will that hurt that other nine, eights value? Maybe, you know, it might hurt a little bit. I was interested to see the greater notes though, that you can get a nine, eight with very light cover tanning. That's surprising to me. I, I would have thought that would have kept you out of a nine, eight, like having very light cover tanning. I would have thought that would that would have kept you out of a nine eight. So yeah, I mean, but like that's the type of stuff. I just take note of that, and you know, that's that is what it is. I mean, this is a nice nice looking book. Get a little wear down in that corner there. I didn't see anything else on the spine. Nothing else really jumps out. This one, I mean, sharp corners, sharp edges, all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I mean, pretty cool. Just have you know one other one other book. Now we have number six, which is the book that we were looking at. That's the Giant Size X Men one. So what's number seven? Got another giant size X Men number one, and a nine point eight. Let's take a look at this one. Then we can see maybe we can take a look at that top corner. This top corner looks pretty good. So I don't know. Let's uh, let's go back to that. Let's go back to that other one. Take a look at this this copy here. So this is the nine nine. Look at that, that top corner, this top corner. Nine, eight looks better, at least on that top corner. You know, let's, let's go check out some other things with this book and looks, looks pretty good. It's got, and see here, you can see these very similar, like print cuts there, but yeah, that, that top corner looks better. Let's, uh, let's keep checking the, the edge on this one. Like I said, always check the edge on this book. This corner looks real sharp. Let's, there we go. Let's go down and, you know, just so we can see, you know, the differences between this one. So those corners both look, look pretty comparable. I would actually say the, uh, the, the nine, eight is a little more flush. Like it's a little off on the, the this is the nine, nine here where we've got a little bit of the interior page showing. Scroll along the bottom. We're in the nine, eight here. Now this is where you can kind of see a difference in the in the cuts in the bindery area. So this is the nine nine. And you see how square and sharp that is. Like there's a little, I mean, like tiny. Like you wouldn't be able to really see it probably unless you're zoomed in like this. Versus this one, which you've got this kind of like rounded edge here. So that's the type of thing that generally I'm guessing is like the differentiator. I mean, that's just what I'm thinking. And here we got that that staple. You know, the color wear there. This one, let's see which one looks worse. What do you think? Let me know. What do you think? I almost feel like the nine eight looks a little lighter than the one in the nine nine. Like this almost feels like it pushed through. See, this almost feels like it pushed through on the nine nine. Versus the nine eight feels pretty light on the on the, the color rub there. And going along the edge, let's see if we can see so here. We can that's probably that other staple, would be my guess. Maybe right there, it could be the wear from the other staple. And you know, there's that oh, there's that top corner where again, that's one of the places that, that, like I said, you can really see kind of like the difference in what I'm used to thinking of with a nine eight versus a nine nine, is how sharp that corner is. And this is the nine eight, a little bit of rounding there. And this is the nine nine, and it feels like a little more square and sharp, but. This still, I still don't like this. You know, that that staple indentation with the color loss. I don't, I don't like that one bit. But, all right. That was book number seven. I feel like that one, that one's the most interesting one so far on here. I don't, I don't remember if there's a, uh, there's an eighth book. Let's just check real quick. See so if there's an eighth book. No, there isn't. All right. So, it was seven books that were part of this. To me, the most useful that's part of this is this comparison of this 9-8 versus this nine, nine. And I, I know this one is off white to white pages, but you can have a nine, nine with off white to white pages. There is a shock suspense stories, eight, the Wally Wood cover from EC, the not the nine, nine that's out there. I don't know if it's just one or if there's more than one, but at least one of the nine nines that's out there is off white to white pages. So you can have off white to white pages with a nine, nine. Uh, the big difference, like I showed, I, I do feel like it's really kind of like that little bit of rounding in that corner, but 
I mean, this corner, and it's still, I'm, I'm a little stuck on that too. Like, this is the 9-9. Nine nine. Like, this corner is not this corner. This one is better. 9-8 corner is better. So, yeah, take it for what you will. But, I don't know. I I don't really feel like this is a 9-9. Nine nine. I, I mean, yeah, it's got it's got sharp bindery cuts, but it has other things. It's got that staple issue. It's got this, whatever's going on in this top corner here. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not loving that 9-9 nine nine all that much. But let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think. I have a feeling I know what most of the people are going to say in the comments. <laughs> I feel like uh, most people are going to agree with me on this one. But I'd still like to hear what you have to say about this. But yeah, this... I think this is going to be a big deal. I think there are going to be a lot more of these nine nines coming out and we'll just have to keep watching it and we'll see, you know, kind of like monitor, monitor the census. I mean, they're going to pop up in auctions. That's going to be one of the big things that you've got to keep an eye out for. And that's why I think there is potentially a lot of risk for downward pressure on prices because every time one comes up, if there is some type of nine, nine pre-screen that comes out, the people that get them, I bet nine times out of 10, if not like 99 out of 100, they're going to immediately sell it because you want to be out the door as quick as possible trying to get your money out of that book. Because if more and more come out, the value is going to keep dropping. So I think it's just going to be every time one comes out, it's going to be sold. So just something to think about. I know people have been throwing around some crazy numbers with this 9.9. Nine. I don't see it as a million dollar book. I just, I don't. Um, I, I would see it maybe more like a 10 to 15 at most 20 times the 9.8 price is what it could go for which would put it anywhere from around 200 to 400,000 in that type of range but you never know one of ones you can have a lot of people that get interested but just remember this may not stay one of one for very long you never know maybe it's maybe it'll stay one of one forever but i have a feeling it may not stay one of one for very long but let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this, got more videos over here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, subscription button is right here, and I will see you in the next video.